Come on. All right. Rojo, you know what's coming, don't you? We better go get our feeding done now, because uh, we got a bad storm supposed to come in tonight. He's looking good. They're calling for some crazy wind again. He said, oh no, man. He said, you better go get my food right now. Damn. Uh, all right, here you guys. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. So yes, we have a crazy advisory. So you guys know, um, a little over a week ago, we had some extreme high winds blow in here in Oklahoma like 95 to 100 miles per hour. Uh, my parents, they live about 10 miles west of us and they got hit super hard. They had trees down all over their place and uh, took a lot of cleanup over there. We actually, uh, I had, or we had a tree down at the lake property, one of the big giant pecan trees. I'll throw up a picture right here and show you guys. Um, I went down there and cleaned that up. It took me about half a day to clean it up by myself. I took the tractor down there and the chainsaw and uh, got some firewood out of it. We don't have a traditional smoker so I'm not going to be using it for that. We'll just be using all that wood for firewood. We got it all cleaned up and cut up and then all the brush and stuff piled up. It's unfortunate when you lose your big mature trees because it takes a hundred takes over a hundred years for those trees to get that big so the local news is calling for some extreme winds tonight they're saying like 80 to like 100 and some miles per hour again tonight but the bad thing is they're not coming in until like three o'clock in the morning in our area so um it's not good praying that it just doesn't come our way and you guys know big man mojo does not like the storms anyways so you guys know i don't like to make these videos of the the negative stuff the doomy glo gloom stuff but you guys know we are down now um our ducks we've only got four ducks we got two hens and then two babies and they're probably running around here somewhere okay here comes two of the babies the third one just disappeared so you guys know the male attacked that one I was doctoring it and then it just disappeared. I don't know where it went. But here's two of the babies right here. They're growing, they're doing well. Since we got rid of the males, we do not have any more problems. And then here comes two of the moms. Waddle, 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 waddle. Look, they're actually kind of in sync. That's kind of funny. Well, they were for just a minute. That was pretty funny. So we're back to four ducks, but hopefully these two are females. We know those two are females and hopefully for now on, we're just gonna raise female ducks and um, no more of the male ducks. Um, after reading a lot of the comments that you guys left us and stuff, it seems like everybody that raises ducks always has problems with having male ducks. They're just always super mean and stuff like that. So we don't plan on raising any more male ducks. Um, if we get to where we lose our female ducks, because we do like having the female ducks. Um, we love baking with their eggs. It is just so much better than chicken eggs when you when you go to bake. They're richer eggs, they're just, it just seems like they do better when you're baking like cakes and stuff like that. So we're gonna continue to raise the Cayuga ducks for now. We might, we might try to get another breed someday or something. But right now we got at least two hens that keep us just enough eggs because you know we don't bake every day and now that we got the freeze dryer you guys seen what we did with the freeze dryer preserving all the chicken eggs um the ducks are free range so they're always laying somewhere in the yard they don't have a dedicated nest or a coop or nothing like that so we always find places where they lay eggs well um they don't lay all the time and so whenever we do find them we're going to get like a dozen or so other duck eggs we're going to stick them in the freeze dryer and preserve their eggs and whenever we go to bake we'll be able to use them so everybody's ready to eat mr walt said you said that right buddy he says go get me the food got a lot of hungry goats over there so we'll walk back to the shop and grab some food and then go back and feed them then we'll go check on core and leesky so we've been getting hit with some early summer storms here in northeast Oklahoma. Some so severe it's been knocking out the power to the farm, but thanks to the Anchor Solux F2000, we've had the power we needed to get through the storm. 
When you own a farm and you're storing a lot of food in the freezer, you have to rely on good power and that is where this battery bank comes in best. The Anchor 767 has a battery capacity of 2048 watt hours, a standard AC related output at 2400 watts. The unit itself weighs in at 67 pounds. 12 ports including RV port, 4 AC ports, 3 USB-C charging ports, 2 USB-A ports, and 2 car outlets. The 767 also provides ambient light. It comes with durable wheels that is easy tow with a retractable handle. It also uses hyper flash technology for a rapid recharge. The 767 can be charged from 0 to 80% in just one hour. And with the unibody drop proof design, the 767 is impact resistant, drop proof, anti UV, and flame retardant. Anchor also provides a smart app for Bluetooth wireless user control and with the premium Outlook design that includes their digital screen. Now, this thing does weigh 67 pounds, but one thing I like about it is this retractable handle and these nice wheels here. I just rolled it on the grass. It is super mobile. You can load it in your truck, but uh, we're gonna really put it to the test. So some of the features that it has, it does have the four AC ports right here. It has an RV plug. It has two car sockets. You can also charge this thing off of your vehicle. You can charge it in your boat or anything that has this car port right here you just plug this right into the back and uh it also you can charge it with solar panels this charges in the back as well open this up so this thing even say we're going to be camping down at the lake for several days we can keep recharging this thing with solar panels so you just plug this right here and then you can you can plug into one two three four five solar panels and of course you can just charge it if you have an AC port, if you got, you know, some type of electric with an AC plug on it, plug it in right here and you can recharge it like that as well. Whether it's running freezers, charging power tools or computers or cameras, that is where we always depend on Anchor. So let's go in the shop and I'll show you how this has saved us more than once. We're gonna test out this light. It does have three levels. That is first, second, and third. I'm hitting this button right here. You can also control this off of the app. So for right now, if I just wanted to use this light at the highest level, it is pulling four watts and it will run for 2.2 days of just light. To get the app, you can go to the uh, Play Store or the Apple Store. And once you get that downloaded, you just click on the Anchor app. And then uh, you hit your Bluetooth on the actual unit. And it's very easy. You can go to search devices. Okay, so I already got this one on here. So I'm gonna go to the 767 powerhouse, open it up, and uh, the unit is running at 69 degrees. You can see it has 100% remaining use time, one day and two hours. And right now we are at 44 watts of AC output. So uh, it also has a power saving mode. And if you go down here to the bottom, you can actually control the ambient light that is featured on the front of the unit. So this app is really cool. It allows you to control the 767 wirelessly. So uh, like if I have it at the front of the boat and I'm in the back, I can turn things on or off, or I can just turn on the light or turn it back off. So the app is a really cool feature of this thing. So we're in the shop and we got a few things here. We are going to power up a refrigerator freezer combo, another freezer. We got an e-trike right here. We're going to charge up the batteries and we got some power tool batteries we're going to charge as well. So right now I've got both the freezer and the freezer combo refrigerator. We're gonna plug in first. Turn our AC on. Okay, they just kicked on and you guys, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we are at 100% battery capacity on the anchor right now. Um, our output is 287 watts. And if we just run the freezer and the fridge, it says it will last 6.1 hours. So that is awesome. That will give us time to keep everything frozen, cool everything back down. We can haul this back outside, put the solar panels out and start charging the anchor back up. So now, let's try the trike. Let's see just how much we can actually do at once. Let's go my 
charger here. And what's nice about this unit is it does have four of the AC plugs. All right, so we got the E-Track charging up. Okay, we got the refrigerator, freezer, the freezer plugged in, and the E-Track charging. But now, you guys know, whether I'm on the farm working or down at the abandoned property down at the lake working, we always depend on power tools. And down there, we don't have any electricity, so it's important that I have something mobile like this where I can charge batteries to work. So what we're going to do is we got a Milwaukee battery and a Dewalt battery. We're going to plug them both in. We got two extra ports here. There's one. There's two. We're going to see where we're at. See the lights are on on the chargers. We are pulling 422 watts. Um, right now, we could uh, do 4.1 hours of charging accessories, batteries, running a refrigerator, whatever you want off this anchor system. From July 3rd to July 10th, our friends at Anchor Solux are offering up to $1,200 off during their Prime Week sale with 30 days price match. You can stay alerted for flash sale deals. The product list will shift every 24 hours. You can also get free gifts like an Anchor 621, an Anchor 737 power bank, and if you're sick of waiting, it is now the best price guaranteed. So go purchase and start enjoying it ahead of everyone else. So click on the link in the description below if you want to save up to $1,200 on your favorite Anchor items. And remember, check out the product list for the limited flash sale. Um, I just filled up the creep feeder for the little weaned kids yesterday. So they got 800 pounds of 18% uh, sheep and goat feed. And it has a uh, cothrin in it that is a medication for coccidia. Anytime you wean young goats or lambs, um, they get stressed out and they get really prone to getting coccidia. So it's always good to either medicate their water or feed them the medicated feed. And I see Mr. Leesky. He's acting like he don't, like I can't see him, but look at this. Mr. Leesky. Leesky. I see you. He said, you call my name? It's almost dinner time. I gotta go feed Mojo and everybody real quick. I gotta feed him now before the storms roll in. Alright, let's grab some food. There's a little turkey. The little turkey's still hanging around. What in the world did you just do? That's what happens when you take a dust bath. That was funny. I hope I got that on camera. Look, look at all this dust she just shook, shook out. Look at that. You guys see that right there? That's all dust that that chicken just shook out. She went and got in the dust. Somewhere and dug a hole. They get, they wall around in dust. They dig a hole and they get in there and wall around. They get it all up in their feathers and stuff. And that actually protects them from parasites like mites and lice. And uh, she must have had a lot on her because she got over here and she just shook it all out. Let's see someone else do that. That's pretty, that's pretty good. That's, that makes for a good video. Yes, I know you make for a good video too. You dance very well, Walt. And there's one of the little banny hens. Alright, let's get some food and go feed Mojo. Who was knocking on the shop door? Somebody was knocking with their beak. Saying, hey mister, let us in. We're hungry. Hold on, let me get it. Oh. Hey, there's my little buddy Smeagol. Where's Sheriff Skeeter at? What do you know today? Yeah, I know it's gonna storm. Did you been you been watching the news? Huh? He said, what do you got there? Let me get a little bite of that. Come on, let's go feed Mojo. There's Mr. Skeeter. What do you know, man? You gotta go feed Mo? Huh? Yes, there's your deputy Smeagol. Come on, let's go feed Mojo. Come on, let's go get him. Alright, we're going to go feed Mojo if we can get him off the porch. He knows it's going to storm. Um, animals can usually sense the uh, barometer pressure in the air, I believe. 
And Mojo knows, even if he can't hear it thundering and uh, see the lightning, he knows that a storm's coming. And if he knows a storm's coming soon, he will either stay in the barn or stay on the front porch. He don't uh, get too far. Hey, what are you doing? I see you. He's like, oh, is he talking about me? Oh, I guess I'll come eat. I know that storm's not too close. All right, let's go eat, Mo. Come on. Let's go. Oh, I'm working my way out there. I'm getting old. You look good with your new haircut that Mama gave you. You look like a whole new dog, you know it? Come on, Skeeter, quit that. Come on, let's go eat. There, we got lots of hungry mouse to feed. It is a lot quieter with uh, four less geese, but these geese are still very loud. Don't get me wrong. Well, where'd you go? Mojo, come on. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, this little chicken just hopped in the bucket and said, hey, don't mind if I do. Mojo, come on. You know what they're doing? There's, there's a nest of eggs in that blackberry bush over there. He smells them. Come on, Mo. Mojo, come on. Come on, Mo. Get over here. Smeagol, come on. Help me protect the food. All right, let's go. I'm going in. Excuse me. My coat's jumping on me. Yep, here we go. Same one, like always. You guys don't have equal manners, you know that? Even though that trough's full, they're still gonna come over here. Alright, the rest is for the birds. Here, get your pocket full of this. He's like, don't mind if I do. Come on, I gotta feed Mojo. I gotta hurry, we're working against the storm. Hey, geese, hey, ducks, everybody. Hey, yo, yo, yo. Your turn. Come on. Come on, get in here, mister. Get in here, mister. Come on, honey. Gotta get your egg. Look good? Huh? There you go, there's your egg. All right, eat for the Yimmy's come. See, I told you. Eat for the, when they come get you food. Don't sniff it, I promise it's good. It's a fresh egg. There you go. Hey, there's, there's my little buddy Henry. Guess what? I don't have a baba. So, a little update on Henry. He is, uh, him and Penelope are down to one bottle a day. So, they're growing. They're starting to eat food. They've been eating grass. They're growing good. You can see him there nibbling on some pellets. He's, he's still learning how to eat and all that. He's having fun. But... He's doing good. I don't see Penelope. Oh, where's she at? She's somewhere. She's right here, I think. No? Hey, Penelope. Are you Penelope? Are you Penelope? I get you mixed up. I'm not the one that bottle feeds them. Come here. Come here. Yeah, that's Penelope. I don't have a baba. I see you're eating grass. There's food over there if you want to eat some. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're a pretty girl. Come here. All right, let's go see if there are any eggs in the chicken coop. So, if you guys didn't catch, I think it'd be the last video. Um, we got a harvest right freeze dryer and uh, we took 52 eggs and put them in there we got them out freeze dried them for about 23 hours blended them up into powder and then put them in mason jars and uh vacuum sealed the lids on there then we cooked some up it was really cool so now this gives me inspiration because now i look forward to keeping all these eggs and if we get too many eggs in the fridge we always feed our dogs eggs we give friends eggs but we still usually end up with a lot of eggs because we got a lot of chickens, you guys can see that. So anytime our girls wanna give us eggs, we'll take them. And looky here, 
we have I mean these girls are just laying like crazy and I don't have enough pockets so I gotta figure out how to do this okay bear with me all right so I purposely left you guys might have seen in one of the last videos I left some of these banny eggs in here because we have a broody chicken that is wanting to hatch some eggs. So I've been leaving her some eggs. And here's the problem. Here she is right here. And the other day, I got her out just like this. Because she wants to sit on eggs so bad. And then I put her right in here so she could sit on these little banny eggs. If you want to have those eggs, hatch them. We need a couple more bannies. Don't tell your mom I said that. But see, there's not even an egg in there, I don't think. Nope. Nope. Let's check in here. Nope, that's it. So I got a shirt pouch full of eggs. Let's see if I can show you guys. There you go. So got some eggs right there. We'll see if we can make it back without breaking any of them and we got to keep an eye out and figure out where the ducks are laying oh, my camera is dark because we need to get some duck eggs because I want to put some duck eggs in that freeze dryer but we need about a dozen or so to fill one of those trays you hear me girls you hear me we need some eggs so if you girls want to start laying that would be great okay she said, yep, let me get right on it. I'm going right now. <laughs> oh, here's two of the babies. You guys following your mamas? <laughs> All right, so I got these eggs. I'm going to go get these put up in the house. And then uh, we'll go grab some more food and go check on Cora and Lisky and the weaned kids. They are now weaned. They've been off their mamas for two weeks now. You marking your territory? Huh? What's she yelling at? You gonna go roll, Mo? Huh? Oh, there he goes. He said, sure enough. This is what I do. Was that necessary? You gonna do it again? He knows I'm recording, so he's showing off. All right. I guess he's not. So this little spot right here is one of the favorite hangouts. Um, that spot right there is one of the old spots where we had one of these uh, garlic salt blocks. And you can see they still continue eating the dirt even after the salt blocks are gone. And then the babies like to lay in it. But these kids like that salt block, I guess, because it's like a sucker. See that one there? Put your licking on it, and there's little Henry. Even Henry's trying to get in on it. But this stuff is infused with garlic, so it keeps all the uh, pests, like flies and ticks and everything, off of them. Good stuff. And it's got a lot of minerals and vitamins for them. <laughs> All right, let's go feed the other dogs. Oh, this chicken just took a dust bath, too. I've seen it. You guys got dust flying everywhere. Don't be... Hey, don't get caught out here in this rainstorm that's coming, or you guys will be muddy. And this little goat's head's in the bucket. Hey. Excuse me. Yep, you better run. Okay, so I found this nest right here and they keep laying we don't need any more baby chickens so I'll go ahead and get these for the dogs because I don't know how long they've been here I don't think they've been here very long you know where any more eggs are skeet I don't see none hey here's some more nice blackberries don't mind if I do these are some yummy blackberries guys 
Blackberry <laughs> is one of my all time favorite flavors. Can't beat it. I'm coming. <clears throat> Hello, goats. Cora, Leesky. Come on. Come on, dogs. There's Miss Cora. There's Mr. Leesky. I gotta set this up here so the chickens don't take it. Hey, Mr. Leesky. What you know, man? What you know? All right. Let's feed these goats real quick. I gotta feed the goats real quick. And then I'll feed you guys, even though y'all got food. I know you got food. Alright, here we go. Hey, Miss Cora. Leesky man. Come on. Leesky, you know they don't feed you in the barn. Miss Cora. Not dope, oh. I know it's hot, but you guys got it. Gotta eat now because it's gonna storm like Alright, good dogs, good dogs. So Cora and Leesky's doing good. They've adjusted to the kids being in the other field. But now, I need to go feed these goats. Um, even though we got the creep feeder, I've still been feeding them. But, every time I get their bowls and I put them next to the fence. Oh, they need some fresh water. Every time I put their bowls next to the fence, they do something and their bowls go farther and farther away and they flip them over. Get them some nice, clean water. Fresh, cold water. So let that fill up. And do not let me forget to leave that water on. It would not be the first time I've done that and that makes for an expensive water bill. Very expensive. So you can see some of the kids are already using the creep feeder again. Yep, talking about you. And that's a girl, she's got pink in her ear. But let's get this creep, or let's get this bucket and go move their little pails, feed pails or whatever you want to call it, closer to the fence. But as you can see, these goats are getting a little bit tamer um, at first. If you guys seen the video a couple weeks back when Rachel and I was working these goats, they wouldn't even come anywhere close to us. Like, they just wanted to stay away from us. But now they're coming closer to us, and uh, we're bucket training them. If you guys have quit dumping these over and taking them away from the fence, it wouldn't take me so long to feed you. They said, hey, we don't care. And there's one of their garlic blocks they've been uh, hitting that pretty hard which is very important for the young goats to get the uh, salt and the minerals as well okay. they're either or fight okay no fighting there's one with the milk mustache I'm not gonna hurt you. So I will uh, um, update you guys. <clears throat> we keep getting a lot of people asking, where's Daryl? Can you update us on Daryl? Do you guys know who Daryl is? Come here. Tell him. Say, I'm Daryl. This is Daryl right here. Come here, little buddy. That is Daryl right there, guys. 
the little goat that was orphaned, his mama gave up on him and then we started bottle feeding him and then it wasn't a week or two later, his mama took him back so we didn't have to bottle feed him no more. And he was my little buddy there for a little bit, if you guys remember. <clears throat> That's a good looking goat right there. That's a little buck. But the one on the left is actually my favorite and we might actually keep him. Come here. There's my little buddy, Daryl. So he's, he remembers me. He said, I remember that camera. You're always sticking that camera in my face. Come here. I'm not going to hurt you. You remember me. I used to bring you a ball ball every day when you were just tiny. Don't you remember? Huh? You remember? He said, yeah, you smell familiar. You smell familiar, dude. All right, I'll quit bothering you so you can go eat. So, you see them eating. It looks like they're starving but i'm gonna show you something come on daryl let's go show them the creep feeder come on. and then you got some goats over there they don't want nothing to do with coming to eat because this right here just put 800 pounds of food in here yesterday yep you're trapped in there aren't you you're a good looking goat too i ain't gonna hurt you carry on i'm fixing the end of the video i just wanted to show everybody the creep feeder real quick I'll back up and give you your space. I'll back up. I'll back up. Don't freak out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he acted like I was really after him or something. So there is another block right there. Of the garlic salt. And uh, everything's going pretty good. We just got some rain this morning. So things should keep greening up like I talked about in one of the previous videos. Um... When we're going in the summer, it's always really iffy because it gets so hot here. It don't take long for our grass and everything to kind of burn up. But as long as we keep getting moisture, you know, like maybe a half inch every week, then um, everything kind of stays green. The trees do good and the weeds and the grass does good. And that's what the goats like. So uh, normally we are not feeding our goats in the summertime, but this year, um, you guys know we decided to have our kids a little later um usually we'll have them like early winter like around november december but this year we held the buck back and didn't put him in until like august september and we had babies like in march and uh it worked out pretty good um the winters here you know just like the summers our weather here is very unpredictable it's very extreme one way to the other it can be really hot in the winter it can be really cold in the winter it can even be cool in the summertime it's just very strange so it's it's always a gamble whatever you choose to do the breeding schedule and all that but i see i think these goats do a lot better having their kids in a little warmer weather than laying them out there in uh, snow and ice when they kid it's just a lot of stress on them <clears throat> so i think that's better and then you guys if you've been following us as soon as these kids were weaned from their moms and when i say weaned whenever we pulled them off their moms and put them over here they were already eating grass and stuff so the grass and the weeds was already established and green when they got in here and their moms weren't with them they already knew what to do so they didn't have to depend on their mom's milk or their mom showing them where to eat they knew what to do so anyways guys um i'll quit yabbing and uh flapping my trap i guess i'm gonna get off here and uh i gotta go turn that water off i almost forgot you guys you guys let me forget didn't you i better i'm gonna go do that before i end the video because i'll get on another uh start gabbing again and i'll forget and then i'll have a very expensive water bill so i can't believe you guys let me forget the water I'm just kidding but anyways guys uh thank you so much for watching this video and uh make sure you are subscribed we've had a lot of people say i, I was subscribed to your channel but uh, all of a sudden youtube took my subscription off and i'm no longer subscribed all you gotta do is just resubscribe every once in a while youtube does that i don't know why and i talked a little bit too much and uh, we just wasted just a little bit of water it's okay it helps flush out some of the little floaties you want to play in there? You don't need no frogs. He likes to come over here and catch the frogs. See, he's hunting frogs. When he gets a toad frog, it makes his mouth like foamy and weird. So anyways guys, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave a comment. Um, we will update you guys. Hopefully the storm blows by and uh, the winds stay a little low and don't bother no more trees or nothing like that. And uh, we'll see you next time.